Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. Today's episode, we're getting into the exciting world and also frustrating world of Windows updates. Dr. Chen, recalculate the new thruster data and relay it to Blue Oyster called immediately in Sunset. Okay, roger that, doctor. Fuck! What's wrong? Seriously, you auto-updating now? General, I won't be able to calculate the right data for the satellite for 49 minutes. How long till impact? 11 minutes and 44 seconds. Microsoft! Okay. I'm gonna be covering a new technology from Microsoft called Windows Auto Patch. And basically it's going to enhance your experience around Windows updates, at least from an admin perspective. I am assuming that you have a certain level of knowledge of the Windows deployment rings in Microsoft Intune and the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, because that's the foundation for Windows Autopilot. Also, just as a quick disclaimer, this technology, Windows Auto Patch, does require enterprise level licensing within the Microsoft tenant in order to be eligible to enroll. I know many of you out there have business licensing, so just take note of that for the customers that you're managing. This is only gonna be applicable and available, at least today, for the tenants that have enterprise level licensing. As always, like and subscribe if you guys wanna see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Let's go ahead and dive in. Before we dive into the configuration of Windows Auto Patch, I just wanted to do a quick one minute refresher on update rings within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, just so you understand how this works from a manual configuration standpoint. And that'll also show the power of what Windows Auto Patch is doing. So if I go under devices here, I can go under Windows and under Windows, you have your update rings. And underneath here, what I can do is create a new profile and I can give this a basic name. And from here, I can click on next. This is where you're defining all of your update settings. And so essentially what you're doing here with the rings is essentially establishing various groups within your organization of which you slowly roll out the updates in waves to a broader set of users. So essentially when you have maybe this one that's for our beta update, so our beta group, this is where we're going to not give a deferral period update. So we're going to say this is going to be zero. We're not going to have a deferral period for the feature updates as well. So I won't go through all these settings again. I just wanted to have this as a quick refresher. But essentially here, you're creating multiple of these update rings and you're exposing them or assigning them in a scoped approach to a broader base of users. The higher you get up and then the more you get up, like if you go into your broad deployment, you may set these quality updates to 21 days out or 14 days out as far as the deferral period. And also down here, you can give users the flexibility of deferring those updates as well too for a certain number of days that you specify. So all of this was manual up to this point in time. We had to create our groups. We had to scope those groups and assign devices to them. We also had to create all of our update rings here for what we wanted to push out within an organization. And now that leads us into the configuration of Windows Auto Patch. To get this configured, we'll go under Tenant Administration and then we'll click into the Tenant Enrollment under Windows Auto Patch. Here, you're going to just basically agree to the terms. And from there, it'll start off this readiness check for your tenant, basically evaluating that you meet all the prerequisites to enroll in Windows Auto Patch. So in this particular case, this tenant does not meet the licensing requirements for Windows Auto Patch, which at a high level just requires that you have enterprise licensing within the tenant. As you can see though, you can click into the settings that were evaluated and you can get more supporting documentation. I'm pivoting now though into a tenant that actually has the correct licensing, but we're just going to evaluate some of the other settings. And again, with each one of these, we get instructions on how to remediate. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna look at both of these, one of which is just to update the unlicensed admin, the other which is just an update ring policy I have in place, which is creating conflicts. So using those instructions, I can go in and I can remediate by allowing access to unlicensed admins. And I went behind the scenes and updated the policy that was creating conflicts. I just wanna show you this for the sake of demo. You can rerun the checks and this will basically approve your tenant to then go enroll into Windows Auto Patch. So once I click on the enroll button here, I'll be taken through a wizard-like experience one of the first things is giving administrator access for Microsoft. They're gonna be updating a lot on our behalf and I'll get into that here in a few minutes, but we'll want to agree to that. Then you'll supply some primary and secondary admins. And once you do that, you'll go through and finish the configuration here. Once you do, you'll be taken to a page with your devices. 
And this is where we're actually going to see some of the automation that took place as part of that wizard. So after we complete the Windows Auto Patch wizard, there's a few things that went on in our tenant that I want to show you here. First is under devices, I'll go under and I'll look at our update rings. And you'll notice that there has been some that have been created for us here. So we have our rings that were automatically deployed. And you can see based off of the quality deferral, this is what we're looking at as far as the broad, fast, first and test. Then if you click into one of these policies and you look at the properties, you'll also note that in the included groups, we also have newly created groups within our Azure environment as well too. In this case, this group is called Modern Workplace Devices Windows Auto Patch Broad. So you can see here based off the configuration settings that it's kind of taken best practice as far as all the unique settings that we want to configure and deploy them out for our broad based ring. And it did so also with all the other rings that we're looking at here. So if we look into test, we look at the properties of this one, this is where we have zero quality update deferral period or feature update deferral period. And we also have this configuration for the user settings so that they don't have the ability to defer the quality updates themselves either by any amount of time. And this again is supplementing another group which is our test group that was created as part of that wizard-like experience. So all of that's pretty cool just because it creates all of your necessary rings for you. And then if we go into the group section, we search for Windows, we can see the various groups that were created here. And I can expand this just to show this. And these are the groups that we were looking at there. There's another one though called Windows Auto Patch Device Registration. And so this is where you want to put all of your devices that will be in the Auto Patch service so that it can evenly distribute them across your various deployment rings in the tenant. So within here, you can just simply go in and you can add members. I've added a single member here just for the sake of demo, but likely you'd be doing this by device groups or something like that. You could also decide, you know, group memberships being dynamic to get a little bit more automated with how devices are populated in here versus having to manually add devices when they're added to the organization. So I won't get into all that, but just note that you add the devices to this device registration group, and then you go back into the devices section now. If this is completed, it will go into and show you this Windows Auto Patch section now under devices, and you'll be able to add and see the devices there. In some cases, I've seen some tenants take some longer times to propagate, so it would still be down in the tenant administration section. So just note it could be one of two places, but the UI is gonna be similar once you get in. You can click into the devices section here and you can see that I have this active device and it is for my Batcave PC and that's the one that I added to that group. But if you're just coming in fresh, you would basically click into the discover devices section and you note here that it can take up to an hour depending on how many devices you're syncing in. You can just say okay and then it'll have the sync in progress. It'll take some time to propagate, but Microsoft is actually gonna do auto assignment of your groups, meaning your deployment rings. And they're gonna kinda of do this in a round robin fashion, but you could see here if I click on the device and I click on assign the device group, I could also manually assign this as well too, which is to say that I could choose what ring that it's in. And so if this is automatic, which is going to be when you initially deploy, Microsoft has, again, a round robin like fashion in which they assign the devices to various groups, randomly and essentially it's going to be a split of saying that we're not going to put any devices in the test group so nobody's going to be that early into a beta you can choose whether or not to put people into the test group we're going to put one percent of devices into the first group we're going to put nine percent of devices into the fast group and then we're going to put the remaining 90 percent of devices into the broad group so this is a great feature just because it saves us a lot of time through having to manually add devices into the various rings. As an IT admin, you're likely gonna to want to massage the data as well too, just because you don't want to have high level executives in the first or fast groups, for instance. You would want those people to be part of the broad deployment so they have the most stable releases versus some more champions or heroes in your organization that are willing to test out the features at an earlier stage. The other thing to note here is that with all of your rings, you have the ability still, like we showed in the previous video, to go in and roll back. So you can roll back the feature and quality updates. You can pause 
the updates from going out to devices and resume them. But the one thing that's different is that Microsoft is using a lot of their intelligence to automatically do some of the rollbacks or pauses as they see fit, depending on if they're seeing widespread telemetry of things being wrong with the deployments. So this could be something as simple as a bug that's really widespread and they're able to go in and roll back the deployment on the device and go through and uninstall it without you having to come in as an IT admin and, and manually do that yourself. So it's a pretty powerful experience that way, just that you have that level of automation and obviously they're aggregating so many data points so they should have better ideas of when to roll back and when to pause certain updates within an organization. Lastly here, also in addition to the update rings, they also give you the boilerplates for the feature updates. So this allows you to control these feature updates that are going out. They don't create any for the quality updates in here because again, this is really just used for patches that are critical that you need to push out for security vulnerabilities and things like that. Okay guys, that's everything I wanted to showcase for you today on Windows Auto Patch. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put them in the comment section below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.